Hey everyone, welcome to my November favorites video. I have some hair care products and some makeup to share with you guys. So I am just going to go right ahead and get started. Generally, I'm not a very high maintenance hair person. I'm very low maintenance when it comes to my hair, um, which is kind of weird because I used to pay a lot more attention to my hair than with my makeup and it's kind of flip-flopped over the years. My favorite shampoos and conditioners come from the Organics brand. Um, this one is the Acai Berry and Avocado Shampoo, um, and I use the corresponding conditioner. I've also tried their Moroccan Argan Oil one, which is in a turquoise bottle, and their Coconut one, which is in a white bottle, I believe. And the difference between each kind is not really big. If I had to say that there was a difference between them, I would say probably it's in their level of moisturization for your hair. From the least moisturizing to the most moisturizing, it would go from the blue bottle to the purple bottle to the white bottle. The reason why I like the Organics products is because they're very nourishing to the hair, but they also rinse out really well, so you don't feel like there's a lot of residue left on your hair or on your body afterwards. The most frustrating thing to me is when you feel like you have like shampoo and conditioner like all over your skin after you rinse it off, and you have to kind of spend a lot of time kind of rinsing it off your body. So that's why I really like the Organics ones. They rinse clean, but they do a really good job in nourishing your hair. I've also tried their deep conditioners, and those are really good too. In terms of their styling products, I've also tried those um, because often times the Organics brand is buy one get one free at the drugstores. Um, mostly Walgreens and Rite Aid I would say. Just keep an eye out on their um, weekly ads. I have never paid full price for the shampoo and conditioner. I've always gotten you know the shampoo and conditioner buy one get one free. One of my favorite styling products is the Renewing Moroccan Argan Oil Weightless Healing Dry Oil. Wow that's a mouthful. But anyway this I like because it's basically the same as their usual styling oils, except that it's in a spray form. And the spray actually comes out really nicely. It's a nice fine mist, so it's really nice and easy to distribute the product evenly across your hair. And you can use this on damp hair or dry hair. And another reason why I like this is when you use it on dry hair, it doesn't weigh down your hair at all. Some finishing sprays, they'll actually even have like a little warning on it saying use sparingly because if you use too much, it can actually make your hair look greasy and heavy. But this, I feel like even when I spray a lot of it, it doesn't have that greasy look at all. Um, so I highly recommend trying this. So the Organics brand is my usual typical shampoos and conditioners that I use um, not on a daily basis because I don't shampoo my hair every day, but you know every time I do shampoo my hair that's what I use. But for the last couple months I did switch out my Organics for a different brand. I tried the new Clear Scalp and Hair Therapy Shampoo and Conditioner because I noticed some dry flakes in my hair. So I wanted to find something that was nourishing and moisturizing to my scalp. Now the shampoo I like a lot. It's very creamy when it comes out of the bottle so you only need a little bit and it lathers up really well and it makes sure to really massage this into my scalp and get it really into my scalp so that I benefit the most from the moisturizing properties and then the suds and stuff I'll kind of just um, work through the ends to wash the rest of my hair and this has worked beautifully. It has gotten rid of all the dry flakes and now I only use this once a week because I found that once you get to the point where you notice the flakes have gone away, if you continue to use it every shampoo, it starts to make your hair a little bit heavy and a little bit greasy. I just noticed that um, you know, in between washes, my hair would be a lot more greasy than if when I use the organics. So at this point, I only use it once a week. And as for the conditioner, I didn't really like the conditioner that much because one, I didn't feel like it was very nourishing to the ends of my hair, which is where I usually focus the conditioner because that's the most um, damaged part of my hair. And this conditioner, you really need to work into your scalp to get the moisturizing benefits of the conditioner into your scalp but when I use a lot of conditioner on my scalp it just weighs down my hair because my hair is very fine and thin so I didn't like using the conditioner that much at all so if 
you are looking for something that's moisturizing to your scalp, the shampoo works fine just by itself. You can just get the shampoo and just use your favorite conditioner and it will work fine. So that's it for hair care. Moving on to makeup, I guess I will start with some eye products that I've been liking. Some of these products you might see again because I did a haul video. Starting with the drugstore products, I have a couple of eye palettes and these are the Revlon Photo Ready palettes. Basically, they are arranged by um, a base shade right here. It's like the primer shade, they call it, that you use basically all over your lids and all the way up to your brow bone. And this is the lid shade the crease shade and the highlight shade and this little square right here is supposed to be an optional topper. It's basically like a glitter topper if you feel like adding a little more pizzazz to your eye look. Initially I didn't like these at all. Um, I thought, I don't know, that the pigmentation wasn't there and I don't know, um, it wasn't, you know, all that special to me. but. The more I use it, the more I like them, and the reason being is if you really use it as you're supposed to use it, with this being the base shade, lid, crease, and highlight, and kind of use it um, the way they tell you to, the overall effect on your eyes is really, really pretty. If you kind of mix and match, or you know, you're doing an eye look and you just feel like using one shade or something like that, then it doesn't work really well that way because the pigmentation isn't like fantastic on these but when you build it up the way that you're supposed to it looks really really pretty and actually turns out really nice on your eyes. This one that I'm holding up is um, number 501 Metropolitan and this one is really nice for like an everyday smoky look or like a brown smoky eye or if you build it up it can look really nice for a night look. Number 505 is um, called Impressionist and this is basically your everyday neutrals and this one's really kind of a no-brainer. If you don't have a lot of time in the morning, you can just grab this and just do your eye look and run out the door. I do recommend these, and they have made it to my favorites video after using them throughout the month. Check these out. They're probably at your local drugstore right now. The next eye favorite is another Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill eyeshadow and this one is in number 15. Number 15 is part of their permanent range. If you remember my last favorites, I picked up two from their summer collection which is limited edition. This time in their sale I did pick up two from the permanent line. Number 15 is one of them and I actually picked up number one also which is more of a blue based color. This one is a copper gold with some black uh, specks or flecks throughout it. This one is one of my favorites because it's a easily an everyday shade. It doesn't come out quite as bronzy as the other two that I picked up from the summer collection. So I do like that this is a little bit cooler, a little bit more neutral. And I highly recommend it because one, it is permanent so you can get it whenever, and two, I think it would be flattering across a lot of different skin tones. Moving on to some face products. This next favorite is not anything new, but I have kind of um, gone back to it this month and it is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation and this has got to be hands down one of my absolute favorite foundations. I guess I kind of put it away for a little while because over the summer I was trying out so many different new face products but this year round is one of my favorites especially in the winter time when my skin gets really dry. This has the most beautiful finish. It's natural yet glowy on your skin. It just makes your skin look so healthy which is something that my skin definitely needs over the winter when it looks dry and dull on its own. I'm in the shade Fiji and I just highly recommend, especially if you have dry skin or if you're looking for a foundation with a dewy finish that doesn't look greasy on your skin. Since I'm talking about face products, I might as well mention this. I have the Giorgio Money Maestro Eraser, and this is a concealer for your under eye circles. You know me and my under eye circles, I'm constantly searching for the perfect concealer to hide them. And this one is an instant favorite because it doesn't settle into my fine lines. That is a huge issue that I've been having with a lot of under eye concealers lately. This one does not do that, and it works beautifully to hide those under eye circles and it's still light under on my skin and it lasts for the whole day. Initially I tried the shade number four in a sample packet and it was a little bit too dark. I mean it worked out just okay but it was a little bit too dark so I picked up shade number three which works beautifully. Shade three is a little bit lighter so it does give a little bit of brightening effect for my dark circles. Um, so if you have issues with your 
this concealer getting into those fine lines do try this concealer it's a little bit pricier but a teeny tiny bit goes a long way because it is very liquidy and as you can see it kind of gets over a little bit on the nozzle there but you have to shake it before you use it just like the foundation and just a little bit does the job. A couple of my favorite blushes that I have been really liking over the last month are the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes in Fantastic and Stellar. These came in the holiday blush set. Fantastic is a matte pink blush and it looks kind of scary in the pan because it looks like a bright bubblegum pink but on your cheeks it just looks like a very pretty natural flush. It is very pigmented so you have to be careful about how much you apply because otherwise it can look a little bit clownish and screaming dolly pink. Um, but if you use a light hand it looks really really pretty, very natural. Stellar is very similar to Exposed, the Tarte Exposed blush except that this has um, some glitter and sheen to it whereas the Tarte Exposed blush is completely matte. I don't want you to be intimidated by the seemingly glitter pieces that you might see in the pan because you won't see chunky glitter on your skin. It only comes out as a nice glow to your skin almost as if you kind of top the blush with a highlighter. So that's why I've been reaching for this over the exposed because in the fall and winter I really like that glowy healthy look to the skin. Another face product that I have been enjoying and is a little bit counterintuitive to the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation because it is a setting powder. It is the Guerlain Meteorites Compact and I'm in the shade number 2 Tom Beige. I don't use setting powder very often because I do like that dewy, healthy, glowy finish to my skin. And a lot of setting powders tend to just make your face completely flat and completely matte. And I don't like that at all for my skin. But the thing with the Meteorites um, powder is that it doesn't give you a completely matte finish it actually looks a little bit glowy on your face. Not to the point where like it looks like you put like a highlighter on your cheeks, but it's just a little subtle glow so that your whole face doesn't look matte, but yet it still sets your makeup at the same time. So that's why I really like this because of that slightly glowy finish. And although I don't use setting powder that often, like I said, um, sometimes I do like it to either make my makeup last a little bit longer or um, to kind of tone down um, the glowy finish that some products can kind of overly have. There are a couple of drugstore BB creams that I have that tend to look a little bit greasier and so I will top it with this powder so that they don't look so greasy. It has the embossed flower on the compact, it has a full mirror inside and then the actual powder also has the embossed flower powder on it. It does have a floral scent to it, but you don't notice it once you put it on your face. And it also comes with a little powder puff and this little plastic sleeve that separates the puff from the actual product so that it's not always touching. I don't use the puff, but I just keep it in the compact. I apply this using the e.l.f. Studio Complexion Brush, which I absolutely love for uh, setting powders. So I highly recommend this if you're looking for a finishing powder that doesn't have a completely matte finish to it. So that's it for my November favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about anything that I spoke about in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. I will answer them as usual. And yeah, I guess I will see you in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.